I wrote, edited, and recorded a 34 minute video testing eight of the most popular network video recorders in these 10 critical areas to figure out which one was the best. And even though the video had a lot of good information, it was so boring that I couldn't finish editing. So instead, in this video, I'm just gonna cut to the chase and summarize everything as fast as possible to help you pick between the best options and avoid the worst ones. This video is sponsored by EcoFlow Portable Power Stations. Stick around at the end of the video to hear more about them. So when you install a wired security camera, you usually choose between on-device recording to an SD card, cloud recording to the manufacturer's servers, or recording onto a centralized device on your home network called a Network Video Recorder, or NVR. NVRs have some advantages over the other options, including centralized management, data redundancy, computer vision, and sometimes cost savings associated with buying a camera with an NVR package. Like I said before, I extensively tested these eight popular NVR options, and instead of boring you with the individual results, I'm gonna jump straight to the conclusions. First, the NVR with the highest overall score after testing with 78 points was Blue Iris. Blue Iris's biggest strengths are compatibility and customization, which makes it the perfect system for a tech-savvy control freak. Every setting in Blue Iris has more settings behind it to let you dial in your security system to do exactly what you want. Blue Iris is also compatible with basically every security camera on the market, so you're free to choose any camera brand, any style, or any spec. Some of Blue Iris's other highlights include the best mobile notifications, which have the option to include a 10 second GIF of the event, a single image, or even a camera live feed, and pulling up alerts in the Blue Iris mobile app was the fastest of any of the NVRs, going from notification to viewing in under three seconds. Out of the NVRs that I tested, the Blue Iris UI3 interface was also the best way to view your security camera live view and recorded footage on a computer. Blue Iris's UI3 runs in any web browser and offers lightweight viewing of groups of cameras, motion events, and even a new synced timeline style view. Blue Iris also has native support for free computer vision person detection, so your notifications will always be accurate no matter what cameras you choose. And speaking of choice, that flexibility in hardware makes it hard to give an exact price for a Blue Iris system, but as tested, I installed the $70 Blue Iris software on a $210 Dell PC from eBay, and I powered eight $200 Anki AC800 4K cameras using a $200 TP-Link 16-port PoE switch for a grand total of $2,080. Blue Iris isn't perfect though. Not only is the setup significantly more involved than most other NVRs, but being a Windows only program, reliability isn't perfect and inevitably some Windows update will cause a random slowdown or a temporary folder is gonna grow out of control. So if troubleshooting is not in your skill set, then Blue Iris is not the right choice for you. A PC-based system also consumes more energy than the other options, and this eight camera system drew an average of 124 watts over a 24 hour period, which was the highest out of any of the systems I tested and would result in an estimated yearly operating cost of about $163. On the complete opposite end of the spectrum, coming in with the second highest overall score is Unify Protect, which is the system that I would recommend for anyone who isn't particularly concerned with price or flexibility, but just wants a system that's going to deliver a high quality user experience without complicated software setup or the need to troubleshoot. Unify Protect had the best mobile app, very good notifications, and the second best web-based live view with time-lapse style viewing of your events and 24-7 recording. Unify is as close to the Apple experience as you can get with security cameras. The choices are limited and the price is high, but it's really hard to argue with the user experience and ease of use. But those limited choices are Unify Protect's biggest weakness. Unify Protect can run on a Dream Machine Pro or a Cloud Key Gen 2 Plus alongside your Unify network controller. Or you can get the purpose-built UNVR to run Unify Protect by itself, which not only prevents prevents loss of camera feeds when the processor load is high, but it also adds redundant hard drives to prevent any losses of your recorded footage. The camera choices are also very limited with Unify Protect, and you'll want to stick to the G4 line of cameras since those are the ones that have person and vehicle detections. While there are some more affordable options like the G4 Bullet for $199 or the G4 Dome for $179, those cameras are 4 megapixel and the image quality just isn't particularly good. The G4 Pro is a major upgrade from those, stepping up to an 8 megapixel sensor and a verifocal lens, but for $449 each, an 8 camera system can get pricey really fast. 
You could theoretically get an eight camera Unify system thrown together for around $1,000 using eight wireless indoor G4 instance and a Cloud Key Gen 2 Plus, but the system that I spec'd out is an actual robust surveillance solution with a redundant hard drive UNVR for $679, a 24 port switch for $379, and eight G4 Pro cameras for $449 each, putting the total cost of the system at $4,650. Now, that is a lot, but this is a very capable, easy to use, professional grade system. However, if we take budget and value into account, then the Unify Protect system is actually the worst and the Reolink system is by far the best. Out of all the systems that I tested, the Reolink NVR was the easiest to set up with camera auto discovery on the NVR, NVR auto discovery in the mobile app, one click remote access setup, and easy setup of person and vehicle detection for use in notifications and recordings. The Reolink NVR also scored consistently high in remote viewing speeds and cellular notification speed, though the notifications are text only. The Reolink system also uses the least power of any of these systems, drawing just an average of 53 watts over a 24 hour period, giving it an estimated yearly operating cost of around $70. The biggest issue with the Reolink NVR is that like Unify, you're stuck using only cameras from that brand. And while Reolink does have significantly more camera options at much better prices than Unify, and their daytime quality is about as good as you could ask for, low light footage from Reolink cameras still is plagued with motion blur and smearing, and I have yet to test a Reolink camera that performs well with moving subjects at night. However, if you're a homeowner with less severe security concerns who just wants to monitor their property or maybe a small business owner looking for a high value camera system for indoors with ample lighting, then a Reolink system is perfect and an unbelievable value. The Reolink system as spec'd out for this video is a 16 channel NVR with eight 4K Reolink RLC 811As. And while those are my favorite Reolink cameras, it's one of their more expensive packages at $1,130. But the same system with RLC LC8 10As instead provides all the same functionality except for varifocal lenses for significantly less money. My last recommendation is the Anki N96 PBD NVR, which is just an all around good option. Although the Anki didn't finish first in any category, it also didn't have any major issues, and the Anki system has the highest compatibility of any standalone NVR that I've ever tested. Anki is a Hike Vision OEM, so as expected, cameras from Hike Vision and other Hike Vision OEMs worked well with the NVR, but other camera compatibility was also extremely high. And this is the only NVR that I've ever tested that's worked with cameras from Dawa, Reolink, and Uniview by plugging them directly into the NVR's PoE ports, which is super impressive. In addition to increased camera compatibility, the Anki also has significantly more control over your camera's settings, and the Anki mobile app offers easier access to your recorded footage, which are all valid reasons to choose it over the Reolink NVR. But those advantages do come at a cost of some user friendliness during the setup process, increased power draw, and of course, increased actual cost. The Anki system as tested in this video was the N96 PBD 16 channel NVR and eight Anki AC C800s, which comes out to $1,949, but Anki does sell a package with their eight camera NVR with eight AC800s for $1,599, which is a pretty great deal considering eight AC800s by themselves would normally cost $1,600. So what about the other four systems? People have been asking me to make a Frigate video for almost a year, but after using it for the last few weeks, I don't think Frigate is the right choice to cover 100% of your security camera needs. The huge learning curve, difficult setup, ambiguous hardware requirements, and lack of built-in features like mobile access, notifications, storage management, and multi-camera live view make Frigate a poor option for a full-featured security solution. Not to mention the fact that on multiple occasions during my testing, my camera streams just stopped working in Frigate for no apparent reason, and Frigate needed a restart to pick them back up. And this is the kind of thing that just can't happen in a security system where reliability should be your top priority. That said, if you already have a purpose-built NVR recording 24 seven, and you wanna use Frigate with Home Assistant to analyze those video streams to add person detection and custom notifications, then I think Frigate is a great option and you've basically got nothing to lose by trying it out since it's free, open source, and it can probably be run on hardware that you already have with varying levels of success and reliability. A Synology surveillance station review is another commonly requested video. And my official opinion on it is that it's fine. Synology desktop software works fine for live view and playback, but it's not nearly as good as Blue Iris or Unify, but it does work. Similarly, the DSCAM mobile app is totally usable, but Synology's Quick Connect service is slow and Synology suggests using port forwarding to speed it up, which I would not recommend. 
My tests were on the DS920 Plus, which sells for $549, and it needs four hard drives, so you can add those for $328. You'll also need a PoE switch for $200, and an eight pack of camera licenses for $379. And after all that, you're already over $1,450 before buying any cameras. Synology surveillance system does have similar camera compatibility to Blue Iris, but it lacks its own person detection functionality, so you'll need to get cameras that not only have on-device smart detections, but ones that are also in the supported camera database for Synology surveillance station to be able to use those features. So as tested, I added in eight 4K Dawa 5842 turrets with compatible person detection, and that brought the total price to $3,348, which in my opinion is just way too high for an NVR that works fine, but it's definitely nothing special. The Lorex NVR was also mostly fine in the sense that you could plug cameras into it and it would record them. But almost everything about the Lorex NVR is worse than the Anki NVR. And the Lorex mobile app is especially bad and is basically unusable. If you're thinking about getting the Lorex NVR, you should just get the Anki instead 100% of the time. And finishing in a distant last place is the Ring Alarm Pro base station, which I was initially really excited to test because I think it could have added a user-friendly way for less tech-savvy users to securely access their cameras and footage remotely. But in practice, it just doesn't work. The $200 a year subscription seems pricey, but it does include professional monitoring of your Ring contact sensors, as well as cellular data backup. So I actually think that that part is fairly priced. The issue is that the system just doesn't work. Cloud recordings failed more often than not, and I was never able to get local recording to the SD card working. So the Ring Pro failed at even the most basic NVR functionalities. Add to that the privacy issues that come with a cloud-based service, and the Ring system becomes one that you should avoid at all costs. And in that same vein, I want to take a second to talk about security and privacy, because security has a little bit more to do with how you use your NVR than which NVR you choose. First and foremost, if privacy and security are your number one concern, then air gapping is a foolproof method to keep your data safe. Set up your purpose-built NVR, hook it up to a monitor, and just keep the LAN port unplugged. With air gapping, there is zero chance of getting hacked or having some government agency spy on you, but it does significantly limit the usefulness of your cameras since they can't be accessed remotely and they can't be used for notifications. So if you want to be able to view your cameras remotely, there are three common solutions for that. The most secure but also the most complicated option is to use your router and firewall to block your NVR from the internet. This allows you to access your NVR from your local network only, and if you want to access your cameras remotely, you would log into your local network using a VPN and then access your NVR by its local IP address. This option is by far the most secure, but it also requires special networking equipment and higher than average technical knowledge. The second, much easier option is P2P. In a P2P system, the NVR registers itself with a P2P server run by the camera's manufacturer, and it associates something called a UID with your external IP address. Then when you open up your mobile app, it also contacts the P2P server and it looks up your NVR via its UID. It then authenticates the NVR and itself and the P2P system does a little networking magic called NAT traversal to connect your NVR directly to the mobile app. In this setup, video is streamed directly from your NVR to your phone and does not relay through the P2P server. Your video is sent encrypted via standard TLS, so even if you were on a public network, your video stream couldn't be intercepted. P2P systems require the least technical knowledge and are in general very secure and reliable. But the downside of them is that they're dependent on the manufacturer's P2P server staying online. And while every P2P server that I've ever examined is using secure encrypted communications, you're ultimately stuck with whatever security measures that specific company has implemented. People often comment, well, I don't want my cameras communicating with some random server in China. But the fact of the matter is that P2P servers are hosted on a regional basis. So you can see here that if I ping the Anki P2P server, it's actually hosted on Amazon US East, which is the same with the Lorix and the Reolink. The third option that shouldn't even be an option is to port forward your NVR and expose it directly to the internet to access your cameras. For Blue Iris, Synology, and Frigate, this is unfortunately one of the most common ways to access your cameras from the internet, since they don't have P2P servers. But it's a really bad plan, and it becomes an even worse plan if you have a purpose-built NVR, which have historically been full of security vulnerabilities. Security vulnerabilities can happen with any internet-connected product, but exposing devices to the internet increases your chances of being hacked dramatically. Moral of the story, if you have the equipment and skills to pull it off, then a VPN is the best option. And for everyone else, P2P with a strong secure password and possibly two-factor authentication is the next best option. I've got links to all the NVR systems from this video down in the description. And if you're interested in purchasing any of those systems, I'd appreciate it if you could use those links, since as an Amazon affiliate, I do earn a small commission at no cost to you. Also, as I mentioned, this video is sponsored by EcoFlow Portable Power Stations. EcoFlow had me test out one of their largest power stations, the Delta Max 2000. 
The Delta Max is the bigger brother of the Delta Mini, and the most noticeable difference is the AC output. Where the Delta Mini can supply 1400 watts continuous or up to 1800 watts with EcoFlow's Xboost technology, in comparison the Delta Max can nearly double that with 2400 watts continuous output or up to 3400 watts using Xboost. It also more than doubles the storage capacity of the Delta Mini going from 882 watt hours to 2016 watt hours. Meaning if you wanted to utilize the Delta Max's emergency power supply feature, you could provide backup power to your 8 camera reeling security system for over a day and a half or even keep the most power hungry system online for 16 hours. The Delta Max is also the perfect power station to bring to a tailgate, on a weekend camping trip, or to a job site to provide all the power that you'll need all day through its six AC outlets, four USB-A ports, and two USB-C ports capable of 100 watts of fast charging each, all without the noise pollution or air pollution caused by a traditional generator. To recharge your Delta Max, it accepts up to 800 watts of solar panels, providing a full charge in about four hours of full sun, or you can recharge it with the AC Quick Charge feature, which can take the Delta Max from 0% to 80% in just 65 minutes. The Delta Max is highly configurable through the EcoFlow app, and it lets you monitor individual power consumption, run time, and charge state, as well as set auto off timers for the entire unit or just the AC inverter to make sure you always have power left when you need it. Check out the Delta Max using the link down in the description to support this channel. I'd also like to take a second to thank all of my awesome patrons over at Patreon for your continued support of my channel. And if you're interested in supporting my channel, please check out the links down in the description. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the thumbs up button and consider subscribing. And as always, thanks for watching The Hookup.